Hello networkers, and in this A&E off topic, I wanna to quickly talk about intent-based networking or IBN and what that is exactly. So intent-based networking is basically something that Cisco is touting, what they're basically leading the charge about the future of how, mostly how data centers will be administered. So IBN is basically the following. Cisco is saying, Let's not worry about how the network is configured, like network engineers configuring VLANs or data center technologies or security policies. Let's just eliminate that altogether. Let's focus on the engineers or the business environments defining what, the, what their intentions will be for that network. So for example, Let's say that there is some kind of an IBN solution, which I'm assuming is gonna be like a turnkey appliance, an IBN appliance that can plug into my network, okay? And I'm presented with a web-based user-friendly interface. And then on the interface, I can make certain definitions or basically define what I want my network to be doing. And let's say that one of my definitions could be something like, I want to have a guest network, basically a BYOD wireless network that only has access to the internet. And I have some bandwidth restrictions in place so that it doesn't consume our entire internet connection. And they can have access to some internal services like printing, web services, DNS, things like that. And of course, make sure that we lock it down and do deep level inspection for those connections from that guest network. So basically, I am defining my intentions for a guest network. Once I make all my intentions and basically assuming do a apply, it will automatically configure the network for me automatically. There's nothing that I need to do. The IBN system is going to configure all the VLANs that are needed, the interfaces, the routing, the security policies based on what I define as my intentions. Now. When you hear about IBN, it sounds a little familiar, doesn't it? It sounds like SDN, Software Defined Networks. And that's exactly what Juniper said. Now, all these network vendors, they have their own SDN product or solution. Like Juniper has Contrails, Cisco has some called ACI, and their Nexus 9000 series switches. Even Fortinet has their 40 core, which is basically their SCN product, and VMware has their own SCN product. So a lot of vendors have their own approach for doing software-defined networking. But that's really what IBN is. It's really another evolution of SDN, which tells me that the first version of SDN, let's, let's say SDN 1.0, and as a recap, SDN 1.0 is really where we have a controller, a standalone SDN controller appliance that is plugged into a data center environment. Because again, SDN is more discussed and deployed in data center environments, not land campus environments. That's never really discussed there really effectively though. There's SD-WAN, but even SD-WAN is a little different compared to what um, SDN is overall. But for SDN, again, you got this kind of a controller and the controller, one or more of them, uh, which is recommended to provide some level of redundancy, uh, plugs into one of the leaf switches in the data center environment. And the leaves are connected into a spine, basically a core, data center core switch. And basically from there, this controller, I can have a web interface and I can set up particular configura configuration parameters or components. Like for Cisco, Cisco's um, ACI SCN product has a lot of moving parts there. If you haven't seen it, there's a lot of moving parts there. Like you have to define a tenant network uh, or tenants. You have to define a private network. There's bridge domains, there's subnets, there's application profiles, there's endpoint groups. There's a lot of moving parts there for configuration. And once you define all those parameters, then the controller will automatically implement that on the actual hardware based on what you define on the SDN controller. So for SDN, it's basically saying, we're treating all the network switches in the environment really as forwarding devices, or forwarding traffic for you know, connectivity between the servers and the user endpoints in the environment. 
and we're basically offloading the control plane from those data center switches and putting that directly onto the controller itself to maybe with the influence of APIs, that's very possible. I can have servers with APIs that can influence the controller. That's another deeper level of configuration. But these APIs can influence how traffic is routed within the environment. So that's basically SDN 1.0 in data center environments which means that IBN is basically SDN 2.0, where there will likely be some kind of a appliance and that appliance will be an IBN enabled appliance. And instead of defining all these different parameters, it's gonna probably be a very simplified user interface, a web interface basically, where you put in definitions or basically defining your intentions for what you want particular parts of your network to actually do. Now Cisco is saying that they're going to introduce some kind of IBM capabilities within their Cisco Catalyst and their Nexus um, switches. But the question is, this is the big question for me, and it's something that Cisco has a really hard time doing. Because Cisco really talks about things from a marketing and from a business perspective. As engineers, we care about what does, in this case, IBN, what does that look like from a configuration perspective, from a deployment perspective? When I'm looking at an actual topology, what does that look like with IBN in the mix? Now, it's really important to understand that this is still a work in progress. This is more of a development thing, conversations really. This isn't mainstream. This is something that Cisco has introduced. They are backing this up very strongly and they're moving forward with it. Again, they want to introduce some type of IBM capability within their Nexus and their Catalyst um, switches. So that is something to kind of keep a very close eye to see where IBN or SDN 2.0, because that's what it really is, where it might actually move towards. But again, from an engineer perspective, which is what I care about, I care about what that will actually look like. Now, since this is all development and this is nothing that is a permanent thing that's out there, I was kind of curious to kind of say what this should look like for an IBN solution. So let's go ahead, go to my iPad, and let's kind of draw out what I think what IBN should be, because I do think is a very interesting concept. And I care about as an engineer, what does that look like? How would that look like in the network environment? So I just want to kind of play around with that and show you what I think it should be. Okay, so once again, I'm on my iPad and I wanna kind of just, kind of do like a very quick draw up of what IBN should look like from a perspective of its deployment, okay? So again, this pertains more with day center environments and with day center environments itself, we know that this mainly consists of what is called a spine leaf topology. And that basically means that we have like a core layer, okay? So we have like maybe spine one and spine two, and we have some called leaf switches. So let's go ahead and just draw a couple of here. And, if, and each of these leaf switches are basically connected to each of the spine switches. Okay, and the, the spine switches are typically not connected together. In a typical day center access, they would be connected with port channels, but in day center environments with a what is called a um, spine leaf um, clause topology. Uh, this is typically what that looks like. So the question is, where does IBN, what could that actually look like? So once again, I do think, once again, I think IBN really is um, SDN 2.0. So I think that there will still be some kind of a controller or controllers, like a cluster of them, that are connected to one or more of the leaf switches. That's important for a level of redundancy. That if one fails, at least there's another controller that can basically take care of the control functions, the control plane functions of each of these um, day center switches. So then basically from there, here's what should happen. So these right here will be considered as, I wanna say IBN controllers. So you have them here, okay? 
And I would say that to access this, it's going to have a very nice, nice and pretty web based interface that again, I can do particular definitions like definition one, definition two, definition three. And each of these definitions are going to basically allow me to put in my intentions for what I want that definition to be like for a particular server group, guests, whatever it may, might be. That's just simply a very simple definition that I can define emphasis on a nice, clean user interface. Because again, um, ACI is pretty busy and it can be very complex for people who once they look at it for the very first time, there is particular training involved. It's not hard. ACI actually is not hard at all. We're hoping to have a training series on that, but there are a lot of moving parts and requirements for what you need to set up first, second, third, and so forth. But again, let's go back to, uh, let me ask you to erase that. Let's go back to our IBM, because that's the focus of this conversation. So again, you have this particular controller that's gonna have a very nice intuitive user interface. So what about all of these devices? So as I mentioned before that there is the Nexus 9000 series and you have the option of enabling it for either um, NX OS mode or ACI mode. So if you want SDN capabilities, then you can enable those Nexus 9000s for ACI mode. If you want to act like a standard Nexus switch, then you basically enable it for that mode. Very, very simple stuff. Well, what about, which is very possible, you have another mode here. So if I have, again, I have, oops, I have a Nexus OS mode, I have an ACI mode, let me have an IBN mode. And that basically means I can see very simply, I can go on to each of the devices on my network and do something simple like, I don't know, set IBN, um, or basically, let's be more practical here for in terms of syntax here. I'll probably say something like set mode um, IBN. And of course, it'll probably tell me what is the IP address of the IBN controller. I think that'd be important. And some other kind of a security key. And then basically from there, once I set that mode, it's going to go ahead and register or communicate with that SDN, or sorry, with the IBN controllers. And then from there, voila, these um, the switches are treated really as um, as lightweight or dumb data center switches. But here's the thing. This is just the data center component. That is great. But if my intentions have things about security policies, then that means that I must have, let's, let's erase this here. Then that means I must also have firewalls. So I may have a group of firewalls here that I want to also enable for IBN, which means it'll be a very similar kind of a syntax command that will register back to an IBN um, type of controller. And then from there, I can go ahead and do some kind of configuration here on that web interface. So again, that is intent-based networking pretty much in a nutshell. It's a new thing that's being talked about, but I think it's important to kind of give you a quick little highlight of what it is and what the future could be for data center environments. Because again, this is really SDN 2.0 and changing the interface of how data center networks and hopefully all type of networks, how they could be administered. And the more we get um, developed with this particular concept of IBN, then we'll have more conversations on this channel. So thank you for watching this video. And as always, keep networking.